Can we give another hand of applause to Brian? So a group internally at HashiCorp that we've talked about a few times before is the HashiCorp Research Group. So internally, it's an industrial research lab, sort of looking 12 plus months out ahead of our main product group. It's sort of the frontier of problems. And one of the problems that's sort of interesting for us to think about is security configuration, right? And I think a perfect example of this is imagine a perfect bug-free firewall, right? But how good is this firewall if it's been misconfigured to allow all traffic? Right? And so I think this highlights an interesting challenge with security software, which is there's this sort of challenge of implementing them correctly, but then there's a separate challenge of how do we make sure that they're actually configured correctly? Because they're really no better than their configuration. Right? And so this problem applies not just to firewalls, it applies to sort of all security software, including Vault. Right? So as we talk about Vault, it necessarily has to be configured with how do clients authenticate, you know, what, what are clients authorized to actually be able to do. And this must be configured sort of by definition in advance of the client, right? The client can't do anything until the system's been configured to allow the client in, right? So typically you have a security administrator or a vault operator who's doing this configuration. So when we talk about sort of the what we have to do, as a security administrator, I have to think about, you know, what is this application going to need? Or what does this set of applications need? How do I authenticate it? How do I authorize it in advance of it showing up? And so I'm going to make some best guesses, right? So I might say I have a web app, an API, and a user service, and all of them need access to the database credentials and email, ser apps, email credentials and API keys. And so I'm just going to write the policies that authenticate and authorize those servers to do that, right? And so there's some guesswork that's going into this. In practice, though, it might be that we've guessed wrong, right? And this is sort of inevitable, right? Because if we guess in sort of too restrictive of a way, if we give too little capabilities, by definition, we break the app, right? If the app needed access to a credential and we didn't give it access, it's not going to work, right? If we gave it access to a credential that it didn't actually need, it's going to be fine, right? It's the, we sort of erred on the side of giving it too much privilege and over-provision, but that's OK. Right? And so this is what you tend to see in practice. Most of these systems are over provision. And over time, we never really remove permissions. We sort of keep adding things. And so we kind of get more and more over provisioned. But if it ain't broke, don't fix it, sort of tends to be the ruling mentality. So we kind of live with this. Right? The challenge, I think, of living with this is what it represents is unnecessary risk. Right? Is that all of these permissions that are granted but not actually used are adding risk into our configuration. Right? And what makes it sort of unnecessary is that the application never needed it. Right? So if our web server was compromised and now it leaked out you know, API keys, well, that was a risk we never had to take. It was an unnecessary one because the, the app didn't need it. Leaking the database credentials was sort of a necessary risk. Right? The application needed that credential. There's really no way around having that risk. And so what we'd like to do, sort of the ideal world, is to never authorize it to begin with. Right, to have it sort of the least, most restricted as possible, sort of following principle of least privilege. Right? This would be the least privileged configuration of the system. So it gets into this interesting question of how do you configure these systems? What are the policies that would give you that? Right? What's the perfect policy? And what you find is there actually is no such thing. There is no perfect policy. Right? Like everything in life, there's trade-offs. On one side, we have our sort of complex but low-risk policy. This might be. I write a policy unique for every single client of the system that perfectly and explicitly says what you have access to. Right? And so this is a very low risk policy, but it would be a nightmare to administer. Right? On the other hand, I have a very simple policy. I can say everyone in my system is root. Right? It's extremely simple, uh, extremely high risk. Right? It's a terrible idea. And so you know, what you find in the real life is something in the middle. Right? There's the what's the practical policy that has an acceptable level of risk, an acceptable level of complexity. Right? It sits somewhere in the middle of this spectrum. Right? And so how do we find these middle policies? Right? And that is exactly what we've been looking at solving uh, with a new project that we're calling Vault Advisor. Right? And so the idea behind Vault Advisor is how do we first start by just consuming what is happening? Right? We'll kind of tail off of Vault's audit log and observe in the real world what clients, what users, what applications are consuming what set of credentials. Right? We can sort of observe real world behavioral pattern. Right? And then what we want to be able to do is create a diff. Right? How do we generate a policy diff between here's how the system has actually been configured versus the way it's being used in real life. 
right? And what we're trying to do is form a closed feedback loop, right? We want to connect back to our operator who's configuring the system and say, hey, here's a recommended set of changes. And this is a very explicit design decision. We want this to be a human in the loop system because these systems are mission critical, right? And you know, much, much against the, the sort of marketing hype, AI is not quite there yet. Uh, we don't trust the systems to go off and make these changes on their own. So how do we keep someone in the loop to be able to eyeball and say, does this change make sense? Is this a valid configuration for Vault? And if so, great, we can adopt it and update the configuration of the system. Right? So the goal is, as an operator, we can come in in the morning, log into a dashboard, and see what's a recommended set of changes for me to make. <clears throat> And what we'd like the system to be able to do is sort of explore the policy trade-offs and find the sort of Goldilocks policy, right? So if we look at this uh, sort of configuration of the system, there's many ways we could configure it, right? One way would be we're going to write a policy per client, right? Per web server, API, and user service. We'll have three different policies and configure it that way. A different way would be go sort of vertical and say there's a policy for database, email, and a separate policy for API keys, right? Or you could say I'm going to have one policy that covers all of these things, right? So there's many ways to start slicing and dicing the same problem, right? But what you might want to say is maybe there's the Goldilocks of two policies, right? There's one that manages the database credential, one that manages SMTP and API. And what this policy does is let us only introduce a slight bit of unnecessary risk, right? We'll grant the API access to SMTP even though it doesn't need it, but we only need to manage two policies, right? So we can find that sort of middle policy that makes the trade-off, right? So what makes this problem hard, and what's not sort of obvious in this trivial example, is that there's sort of an explosion in the number of possible ways of solving this, right? This problem is NP-hard, right? So in this trivial example, yes, you could sort of almost visualize all the possibilities, but if you scale this up even to a matrix as small as 10 by 10, right, 10 entities and 10 secrets, all of a sudden there's a sort of an infinite number of ways you could solve that problem. So there's a sort of meaty problem, how do you actually decompose this challenge and present these Goldilocks solutions? So we don't have time to go into the details of it. There's going to be a great session tomorrow by our research team uh, doing a deep dive into Vault Advisor and how it works. So I highly recommend for people that are interested, go check that out. The goal of the project, though, is how do we get this to general availability? Today, it's still very much a research project. We're actively recruiting beta testers. So if you're interested, uh, please find John Curry. Uh, and we're going to publish this as a white paper. But beyond that, what we realize is that this is not a uniquely Vault problem. Anything that's a security software is only as good as its configuration. And so how do we look at broadening this beyond just Vault and really looking at what's the discrepancy between how security software is configured and how it's used? <clears throat> 